Welcome. Hopefully you liked the new opening video of Magnus Division. So, in the news, there were some recent announcements from the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is a UN uh, nuclear watchdog group. And they stated that Iran has enough enriched uranium, enriched to 60% purity, to create three atomic weapons. So they need approximately 42 kilograms when creating one atomic weapon, and that they have 121 and a half kilograms. And then they would be able to, within about three weeks, enrich enough for up to five weapons. So I've done some previous escalation videos around the conflict in Gaza, and then in a lot of ways, it's a byproduct in some ways of this proxy war between Israel and Iran, and different ways that we could see some levels of escalation. And I always state any of these scenarios as I do them, that the idea that they would cross a nuclear threshold is very, very remote. Um, and there's a lot of people who question, especially in authoritarian states, like what happens if a leader's suicidal? What happens, you know, if they're a nuclear armed nation and they're suicidal or they feel like their back's against the wall? In some ways, Putin was tried to be pers um, portrayed in that fashion, especially during the early parts of the Ukraine war. Um, and it doesn't really mesh with what reality is. Reality is authoritarian regimes, they want to stay in power more than anything else. Um, once nukes start flying, that's a real good ticket to losing that power. And it really defeats the entire purpose. Not to say that it's not possible, that it's not even probable in some fashions, but I think this whole idea of a suicidal leader just saying screw it and pressing buttons isn't closely grounded in reality, but there's always a potential. There's always a potential in any conflict. So I wanted to look at this one, and according to a prior report from that same International Atomic Energy Agency, in 2012, prior to that first nuclear deal that went kaputs, they were working to develop a 50 kiloton warhead. So I'm going to kind of go based on that 50 kiloton warhead design. Most likely of their current ballistic missiles, especially something that they would want to threaten Israel with, would be the medium range ballistic missile. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce this. I'll flash the name across the screen so you guys can see it. I'm not going to attempt to announce, uh, pronounce it. Um, but suffice to say, it's a medium range ballistic missile. And it does have a payload size that could potentially carry a nuclear warhead. And there's some stuff that goes along with this. I mean, first off, for a viable weapon, they would have to enrich the purity closer to about 90%. And so they may have, okay, in three weeks' time, they could develop enough for five warheads. They'd still have to work on the delivery system. And so that could take up to a year. So... In this scenario, though, we're going to go more off of an assumption that they have a delivery system or available delivery system because this is set kind of in this three to four month window. And it's going to look at they have a viable delivery system with a warhead. The conflict in Gaza has continued to escalate. And they have decided that they're going to do a mass ballistic missile strike. And they're going to, because Israel has a robust ballistic missile defense system, there's also U.S. naval assets nearby that obviously did a tremendous job intercepting the last time a bunch of ballistic missiles were shot from Iran to Israel. I think over 50% of them were actually intercepted by U.S. assets. Um, but So we're going to go 
off the assumption that this is going to be a mass strike to try to penetrate into their defense systems. The strikes are going to come from both Iran, South Lebanon, as well. Um, so I don't have a good system to represent this, so I'm going to do single detonations to kind of do it in its place. So it may not be quite as visual with some of the others. So the 50 kiloton warhead, and again, the idea here is this is going to be a terror weapon. So it's not to strike at military targets, but to cause mass casualties, a mass casualty event. And we're going to see three locations. So let's take yield. We're going to go 50 kiloton. Go with that 500. So we've got a five strikes, representing the five weapons. And this would have been followed with a large-scale conventional strikes, most of which would get intercepted. I don't see a large point in even trying to model that. And this, like I said, this doesn't do as good a job modeling conventional losses. Or maybe I just need to play around with it better. But um, the amount of casualties would be minuscule compared to the nuclear strike so let's go ahead and see what these initial casualties would look like here in Israel and there would be some effect to the Palestinians as well which less casualties than what they're seeing right now overall for several months but we, we, you know obviously the population there's going to be some mixed population in there so shouldn't say that 8,000 would probably just represent the areas of um, Gaza and um, oh, West Bank. Sorry. But you're looking at a little over a million casualties. So, nothing to scoff at there. So, Israel has one of the worst kept secrets, which is that they have a nuclear weapons stockpile themselves. They never admitted to it, but it is it is a reality that they do have it. I have no doubt in my mind that if they were to be hit with nuclear weapons and had a very strong belief and or proof that it came from Iran that they would respond with some sort of nuclear response. I'm going to do a limited one. And this one will be a little more visual because I'm going to Use the built-in stuff on their side. Let's go. Whoa, not 5,000. Okay. Here we go. These are 40 kiloton. It's going to be a, a measured response. We 
they said, what do you mean by measured? Meaning they are not going to use the, they're using a small portion. Take a look here. We should start to see these launch here shortly. Maybe. Oh. Got a little impatient there. So there's a lot of debate and I, I've seen in comments recently on some of my videos. And I tell you, I appreciate it. I've seen some of my subscribers and some of the people that have watched um, seeing more and more repeat viewing. And I do appreciate that um, tremendously. So some debate about casualties and what they would be down the road i have a planned video i'm going to do kind of as a rebuttal to annie jacobson it's going to take a little bit of time because again i want to make sure that um i'm not going to go off of you know half-baked ideas but look at you know what the research says and take the sensationalism out of nuclear war so i think it's very important for people to know it is very devastating but also have a realistic expectation of potential outcomes it's not the end of the world um, but it would be absolutely tremendously devastating and we see it right here we saw three weapons exchanged and already are a million lives lost in a matter of instance and so if you were to look at the conflict there up to this point I mean, that casualty rate would just be raised exponentially through that. Okay. Okay, so you saw here what I consider a very measured response. But naturally, they're hitting some of their largest cities. And this is, you know, terror for terror. Let's call it what it is. This wasn't a military response. This was a terror attack. And they say they were attacked first and... Absolutely, they were, but there's no point sugarcoating this when we look at this stuff. You have to you have to be very honest about what it is. And when you're detonating nuclear weapons in urban environments, it is a terror weapon. And you're looking at eight million casualties, kind of out of the gate. And so it is kind of eight to one casualty rates. Um, part of that is that. And don't quote me on this. I'm gonna give me a second. I hate to spout off without actual details. Well, you know what? It's it's baked into here, so I don't need to. Israel is approximately 8 million people compared to when I ran at 79 million. So percentage-wise, casualty for casualty, you're looking very comparable. 1 million, um, you know, kind of 1 out of 8 people in Israel being killed roughly about 12 percent if you were to take that same kind of logic on iran it's about 10 percent so iran did suffer much higher casualties percentage wise it's a little bit lower um long term you know clearly one of their major cities are hit the ability for medical supplies and recovery efforts would be very difficult um, versus Israel. Yes, they, their cities were hit too. They'd be able to be, you know, resupplied by sea um, and allied closer to the Western powers. And if they were to be hit first, you know, potential of, you can say what people choosing sides or whatever, but it'd be a retaliation versus a uh, first strike on their own end. So, long story short, um, 
is kind of a what I consider a more realistic kind of scenario than the initial escalation video I did um, based on best knowledge currently from the people in the nuclear watchdog groups. And we'd see quickly, and this is again a, at a small exchange that we're looking at over 9 million casualties off that small ex exchange. So, nukes are not good. Don't, don't start nuking people. Um, so hopefully, you know, I want the, hopefully the videos are at least somewhat informative. Remember, these aren't the be all end all. I will say that it was just recently a, a university and don't quote me on this. I can't remember the university they actually used this simulation to model some research effects into nuclear war. Um, and again, I'm going to include that in my rebuttal video to Annie Jacobson. And I also want to be clear too, this is not my simulation. I didn't design this. Um, Ivan Stepanov, excuse me if I mispronounce your name. He's the one that really um, spearheaded this. And I think he did a fantastic job. I think it's a great simulation. And it's an important tool for educational pieces. So, just as a takeaway. And so, uh, appreciate everybody. Please like and subscribe. Be on the lookout. The rebuttal video to Andy Jacobson is going to come out along the way. Um, got a review for a piece of home gym equipment. I said, you know, it's my other passion. If you've seen some of my other videos, we have a tremendous home gym. And train just uh, just got done training some delts and uh, trained our arms yesterday, getting in some crazy supersets and stuff. My wife's crazy when in the gym. She keeps up with everything I do. So um, I did get a few extra sets in today, though. She got stuck um, at the supermarket, but uh, so I was able to get in some 16 sets ahead. So a little bit more work than she is, but hey. Um, and then I got uh, the hobby stuff um, for some of the model scenery stuff I'm doing. So check it out. Appreciate everybody. Thanks.